There are so many people out there getting incorrect spousal benefits, didn't file correctly the first time. And there's also a lot of people out there that are about to file for spousal benefits and want to make sure they're doing the right thing. Well, this is the video for you. Uh, my name is Ed Weir. I'm a former district manager of the Social Security Administration. I ran the third busiest office in the country, and uh, I've helped uh, millions of people with all things Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. And uh, so we're going to go through all of that today. This is going to be a couple of video series and any questions or changes in the future, I'll tack on another video at the end. But uh, let's go through here and make sure you do the right thing. One thing the government and Social Security is not, it is not forgiving. So if you make the wrong decision from the beginning, that might just be with you for the rest of your life. So it's important that you make the right decision and you have that information. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So what are we going to talk about? We are going to talk about how to qualify for the for spousal benefits, the all important how much you will actually receive. What about working while receiving those benefits, common mistakes and frequently asked questions. And there's so many incorrect videos out there on uh, social media with the uh, so-called experts. There's a company that uh, gives you a cute little certificate after a couple of days uh, online training that says you're a social security expert. So there's a lot of so-called social security experts that uh, you know make videos and uh, they're giving out incorrect, incomplete misleading information. And unfortunately, a lot of people are making decisions based on that. So that's uh, why in my retirement, semi-retirement, I guess, I'm uh, making all these videos to uh, make sure you are not one of those people that make the wrong decision. And if you are currently receiving benefits, maybe we can see, uh, see if we can fix that. All right. So common mistakes. And then um, we are going to show you how to actually file, when and how to file. And the last part will be when do your benefits stop? When are your benefits terminated? Like I said, this is probably going to take a couple of videos, but we're going to go down it systematically and we're going to talk about current spouses, uh, prior spouses, divorce spouses, a category called independently entitled divorce spouses. So we're going to go through the entire thing. This is going to be your one resource for all things uh, spouse benefits from Social Security, Medicare, all the rest of it. All right, let's get started. So the first thing you need to qualify for spouse benefits is you need to be 62 years old. And you'll say, Ed, I heard that you can collect spouse benefits when you're 60 or 50 years old. Well, that's another video. Those are surviving spouse benefits that you can collect at 50 years old. If you're disabled, decided they're called DWIB benefits, disabled widow's benefits, or you can collect at 60 as a surviving spouse. But uh, so that's a video I just completed. So if uh, that's your category, jump on over to that one. We are just talking about um, people that are married to someone that's uh, still alive and kicking or divorced from that same individual. Another prerequisite to be entitled to spouse benefits is you need to be married to that person for one year. So we're talking a spouse and then Social Security calls the person you uh, file a claim on the number holder, the worker. So you had to be married to that person for one year. And this is what a lot of people out there in YouTube and you know uh, TikTok and websites get wrong is they say you have to be married one year, end of story, done. With Social Security, there's always exceptions, the exceptions, the exceptions, policy is over 20,000 pages. There is an exception to that. So if, um, let's say, and you were receiving benefits as a divorced spouse, and then you got married, you know, two, three, four, five years later to another person, because you got married, your benefits stop. You got remarried, so your benefits to your previous spouse stop. People ask about what about common law marriages? I technically wasn't married, uh, you know, uh, it was a common law marriage. It really depends on your particular state. Usually, uh, the, uh, the federal government, you know, doesn't follow a lot of the state laws, but in terms of common law marriages, they do. What about divorced spouse? 
So again, we're talking different categories of so divorce spouse. You would have to be married, have been married to that person for 10 years or longer. So you were married to that person for 10 years longer and you're currently 62 and your benefits on your own record are not over 50% of what the benefits on that particular person's record, because there was an old um, strategy, let's say, to maximize your benefits. Um, and this no longer, you may have heard of this, um, but it's basically, it was called file and suspend where you would have the higher earner file for benefits. And because the higher earner file for benefits, now the spouse can file for benefits. They, uh, they'd file for their, you know, retirement or spouse benefits. And then the higher one would suspend the benefits to let their benefits go. You know, every month you wait, um, to collect your benefits, your benefits go up a little bit. So lower benefit spouse would continue to get benefits. So Congress stopped that many years ago. So in order to get spouse benefits, the, the wage earner, the worker has to have filed, but there's an exception to that. And I say about social security is always exception, exception, exception. That's why, uh, um, I do a live YouTube session about once, a, about once a week. So make sure you subscribe and do all that, you know, uh, click the bell and uh, like and comment and all that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, that way you can uh, be notified when I do a live. So if you have a particular question about your particular situation, you can jump in there in the live and ask it. So the exception is it's called independently entitled divorced spouse. So this is only for divorced spouses. So in this particular case, your ex-spouse doesn't have to have filed for retirement. So there's thousands of people out there that are not receiving the benefits they're entitled to because they think they have to wait for their ex-spouse to file. They don't. It just, they, the ex-spouse just has to be 62 years old. And then you call Social Security, set up an appointment and tell them, I want to file for independently entitled divorced spouse. And after they are surprised, I'm just like, okay, where did you learn that? He goes, well, I was walking watching Ed's video. Oh, okay. They'll, they'll know that they can't pull the wool over your, your eyes because you know everything. So, um, independently entitled divorced spouse. So you can get spouse again, you have to file for benefits on your own record. So you file retirement on your own, and then you file for spouse benefits on your previous spouse. Even if that person hasn't filed yet, the, the only qualifying thing is that you have to be divorced from that person for two years. So you can't divorce that person, you know, six months, a year ago, and then file for independently entitled divorce spouse. You have to be finally divorced for two years in order to receive those benefits. And then there's another way spouses can receive benefits at any age. If the spouse has a child with a worker, again, current spouse or divorce spouse, if have a child from the worker and that child is receiving benefits from that worker, then the spouse is entitled to what's called auxiliary child in care and auxiliary child in care is basically that um, you are taking care of the worker's child and that child is under 16 years old or they became disabled before the age of 22. So, so you can do that at any age but there are work requirements and we'll get into the work requirements for pretty much all spouses, independently entitled, uh, you know, divorce spouses, current spouses, there are work requirements when you take those benefits early. So we'll talk about those um, probably in the next video. Okay, here's an important part. How much will you receive from your spouse? Well, you will receive up to 50% of that person's primary insurance amount. PIA. What is a PIA? That's how much that person would receive at their full retirement age, whether it's 66 or 66 in six months or 67, whatever that person would receive at their full retirement age, you can get up to 50% of that. And what do you mean by up to? Well, if you file early at 62, then you're going to be reduced. So it's every month you file early, you're reduced and you can, I'll, I'll put a link to the calculator and it'll tell you exactly. It's a, uh, let's say 36 months early, it's reduced. Uh, you get 30 or you get 37.5% 
of that person's primary insurance amount. So I'll put a calculator at the uh, at the bottom there. Um, but I, I always recommend people don't do the long division themselves because I've you know most times people have done their own calculations. Um, or they pay some company to run the calculations, and <laughs> they're usually wrong. Um, I've seen it uh, yeah, a few hundred thousand times. Um, so um, you call Social Security Administration and you say, okay, I just turned 62 and I'm trying to kick around the idea whether I should go ahead and start now or wait a year. How much is the difference? And they'll tell you exactly what the, uh, the benefits are. And tell you, uh, okay, if you start this year, you'll get X amount of money. If you wait a year, you'll get this amount of money. Um, but if you want to do the long division, um, just check out in the description and it'll tell you the percentage. But obviously, you'll have to also know the um, benefit amount, the full benefit, the PIA of the person you're filing on. And one of the things is for divorce spouses, you can any, any person you're, you're, you're married to for 10 years or longer, you are eligible to file for that on that person's record. So I've had this many times where the person would come in, it, you know, my 10 o'clock appointment, uh, spouse benefits, and the person would say, okay, I've been married three times. Where's the most money? Okay, cool. Let's do it. So you look at the first husband. And if you don't have the social security number and stuff like that, don't worry about it. Um, as long as you know the name, date of birth, uh, you know, kind of a rough estimate of the date of birth, the city. And, if, you know, if it's a very common name, it helped. If you know you knew the parents, you know names or mother's main name or something like that, but as much information as you possibly provide, and they can find the social security number, and they'll look at the first husband, and they'll look at the second husband, and then they'll look at the third husband, and they'll say, "Oh, looks like there's more money on the second husband. He's 62 years old. Um, he's filed, so easy. That'll be an easy claim. Or he hasn't filed. That's so that'll be an independently de titled divorced spouse." It's an easy claim for you, but it's a nightmare for the claim specialist because there's it's not automated anyway, but that you don't care about that as long as you get your money. So which is the important thing. All right, let's talk about some claiming strategies for couples, uh, worker, spouse. Um, number one is you both file at the same time, whether you're 62, 63, 64 years old, you file at the same time. And again, if the spouse's benefit amount is less than half of the higher wage earner, then you will have to do three claims. One is for the spouse or for that, per that, per that particular person's retirement on their own record. The higher wage earner will have to file a retirement claim on their own record. And then the spouse will have to file a, another claim. So total three claims for benefits on the higher wage earners record. So again, the difference between, so if the, let's say the higher wage earners full benefit amount is a thousand dollars and the, the lower wage earner is receives $200. So half of a thousand is 500. So the lower wage earner will receive 200 plus they file the spouse and they'll get an extra $300. That's if that person is at their full retirement age. Obviously, if they file early, then they'll get you know a reduction on their own and a reduction on the spouse benefits. And remember, anytime you lock in your benefits like that, you file early. You know, if you file at sixty-two and you're you know you're a thousand dollars, but you file at sixty-two and and that's a thirty percent reduction. So you now you're seven hundred dollars. You don't receive seven hundred dollars. And then once you turn in your full retirement age, it goes up to a thousand dollars. A lot of people are, uh, you know, misunderstand that. Um, no, once you're locked in, that's it. You're locked in for the rest of your life. Obviously, you'll get, you know, cola increases if Congress determines that, you know, they they give cola increases. And um, if you work, and you know, Social Security benefits are based on the high thirty-five years of earnings. So if you work. And that work that year you work, it's one of your high 35 years. Then once your employer, you file taxes and you notify the IRS and the IRS notifies Social Security, they will recalculate your benefits for you and your spouse. And uh, it's all automatic. You don't have to do anything. So in that case, you'll get a COLA increase, you know, the first part of the year. And you also get uh, um, a benefit increase based on your prior year's work. 
Um, and those will usually come a little bit different. You know, the, the COLA is pretty quick. Um, the benefit calculation increase is takes a little bit longer, but they will backdate it to the beginning of the year. All right. Another strategy is obviously, you, you know, both wait to your full retirement age and file. And again, if one is less than half the other, you'll get, you know, have to file for a spouse benefits and get extra benefits. And strategy is you wait until you accumulate delayed retirement credits, and that can be all the way to 70 years old. So there's, you know, 70, that's where it tops out. So if you're 67, you wait till 68, 69, every year it's about 8%. And you don't have to wait the entire year to get that 8% delayed retirement credit. So people say, well, it's, it's you know, I, I, I'm tur I turned, um, you know, 68 in January. So I have to wait till January of the following year to get that 8%. Well, to get the full 8%, yes, but your benefits go up a little bit every month that you delay before retirement age, your full before your full retirement age and after your full retirement age, again, all the way up to 70. And then it stops at 70. And obviously the coal and everything I just talked about. So both of you wait until your full retirement age. But there's another strategy, it's called the split strategy, where the lower wage earner goes ahead and files, let's say at 62, for their own retirement benefits and the higher wage earner doesn't, continues to work or just lets the benefit increase to you know 67 and 68, 69 and 70. And all the while, the lower wage earner receives monthly benefits from Social Security. And when the higher wage earner starts their benefits, then this spouse files a spouse claim and then brings their benefits up to 50% if they wait after their full retirement age. So that is a strategy too. And again, so th this, uh, you know, all of these strategies I'm talking about are just social security strategies. So I'm not a tax professional. I don't pay, play one on TV. So this is, uh, you know, you, you know, in terms of, oh, well, if, you know, Ed told me to go ahead and file at 62, but now I'm over in this tax bracket and it's actually costing me more. You have to take all that into consideration, all your other income. But I'm, I just want to talk about Social Security. Another thing that a lot of social media types out there get wrong is the delayed retirement credits. It's amazing how many people get this wrong. Okay. Delayed retirement credits. The higher wage earner, let's say, um, waits till they're 70 years old and gets delayed retirement credits, 8% tacked on the spouse does not receive that benefit. So if the higher wage earner by delaying, they get $4,000 a month, but their PIA at their full, their benefit amount at their full retirement age is 3,000. Half of 3,000 is 15. So the spouse gets up to $1,500. Again, if they, if that person waits till their full retirement age, they don't get half of 4,000. However, this is where a lot of, uh, yeah, that's just one of the reasons I've kind of come out of retirement, try to correct the record here, give people uh, accurate information. That's why please subscribe and like and uh, share and all that kind of good YouTube stuff. So this video goes out to more people um, and more people get the information because I know there's a lot of people out there making the wrong decision and uh, yeah, regretting it and having a hard time. Um, so let's make their life easier by, you know, sharing and liking and commenting and all that kind of stuff. And that way it kicks out the algorithm and more people get this. And you, because you push the button, it got out to someone that needed this money. So they owe it to you. Um, all right. So the, the delayed retirement credits do not go to spouses. They go to surviving spouses. So when you make that calculation of, you know, when the higher wage earner should collect their retirement, how much DRC they, they want. I say, well, you know, why wait and get more DRCs because you can't benefit from it. That's what I heard, you know, this YouTuber said, well, that's correct while you're alive. But when you pass, which we inevitably will, the spouse receives those delayed retirement credits. So again, I did a series of videos on survivor benefits. So check out that one and that way you make the correct plans for what happens in the future. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and end it 
this particular video here right now. And next video, we're going to talk about, again, working while receiving, common mistakes, frequently asked questions, and about how to file. Um, I get a lot of complaints. I said my videos are too long. Well, that's uh, the nature of the beast when you're trying to provide complete information based on bureaucratic policies that uh, the exceptions, exceptions, and uh, yeah, it can be quicker, but uh, then you will probably make a wrong decision. So, but let's go ahead and end it right now and then uh, check out part two of this series. We'll see you then. Have a beautiful day.